Hello. Welcome so, back to Corn Distacks. Thank you for joining us. It's your favourite creepy little guy is Haz and Beck. Yeah. And Toast is here. You might get to see him Toast as well. Toast the cat is about. Yeah. So if the camera is shaking, it's because of him. If you hear like big crashing footsteps like in Jurassic Park, it's because Toast is ready for his dinner. Yeah. We've been book shopping. Book shopping. Today. We went to the old Curiosity. The old Curiosity bookshop in Loughborough. It was really good. It was real good. Uh, the lady who runs it, whose name, uh, unfortunately I didn't get, the old Curiosity bookshop, it's one of the many bookmarks she gave us. It's in Viking House, Viking Court, Shepherd's Road, Hathard? Sure. Yeah. Um, we'll put the address on the description. Uh, she, uh, it was Bank Holiday Monday. Happy Bank Holiday. It's probably not Bank Holiday when you're watching this. Yeah, okay. Unless you're watching it on oh, the it next... Could be, it could be a Bank Holiday, Holiday Monday, but it's not this Bank Holiday Monday because this isn't a live stream. Um, but the lady there, whose name I didn't catch, she was very nice. Uh, she made us a brew yeah. uh, as we were going around. Luckily, because uh, it was a, kind of a rainy, miserable Monday. Uh, well, not so luckily for the bookshop, but luckily for us, the bookshop was empty. Um, so we got to go through all the, all the, the shelves. And we made such a mess. Yeah, it, we made it's, a bit of a mess. It's double stacked on the bookcases. So we were like peeling off the yeah. front layer to get, see, see behind and get mm. our little grabbers on stuff. <clears throat> so we got a bunch of books. So we're going to show you them. Yeah. Do you want to do one each? How many books do you have? I got four books. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. Eight books. All right. Why don't you do two and I'll do one? Okay. That's toast. That's toast. I don't know if you saw his little back. He's here. It's a baby. In one. All right. First one. Also. I got this one because it's purple. Not going to lie. It's got a really long blurb. I've only read one Dean Koontz novel, which is Demon Seed. Mm. Um, and I enjoyed it. So I'm keen to stock up. I've read, uh, read a lot of his 90s output. It's kind of like, growing up, he was like the budget Stephen King. I, I don't know if that's how a lot of people see him, but that's how he came across in, in the Vale uh, HQ. But mm. yeah, my mom had a... When she'd run out of Stephen King, she would go to Mr. Coons. The House of Thunder. That's a pretty cool cover. Purple, purple. What's the House of Thunder about? Is there a house? Is it in a cavern called the House of Thunder, Susan Thornton watches in terror as her lover died a brutal death in college hazing. And in the following four years, four young men who participated in the grim fraternity rite likewise died violently. Or did they? Uh, I don't know. Probably. Guess I'll have to read it. Yeah. So that's number one. Mm, sounds right. Cool cover. And then I got another Dean Koontz novel. I got Demon Seed. So... There's a story behind this book. Yes, there is. So I read I Demon Seed. Most of them, yeah. From the library. And on... I looked at Dean Koontz afterwards because I wanted to see if all of his novels were like that, if it was worth me picking them up. And I found out that the first time that Demon Seed was released, it was a very different story than the um, the latest edition. It was basically partially rewritten. So I've been on the lookout for the earlier version of the story so I can read that as well. That's why I was rifling through. This isn't an early version of the story, but it is. Yeah, but it is a paperback, and I only have a hardback, so I will um, probably sell my hardback because I prefer a paperback. Is it about like a creepy AI or something? Yes, it's got like a creepy AI woman trapped in a house, <laughs> spooky stuff. There is a movie. I don't think I've seen the movie, but I've seen the poster a lot. It's a cool poster. I he I hear that the movie is a different story again. Mm. to the two versions of it. Let's put the poster up. Okay, so my first one is The Amulet of Samarkand, or Samarkand, by Jonathan Stroud. Uh, this uh, was £3.50, which seemed like a steal. Bargain. Um, and I've, you've read these books, haven't you? Yes. So yes. I've always been interested in getting into it, but I just never really pulled the trigger. Um, when the 5,000-year-old genie Bartimaeus, or Bart Bartimaeus is summoned by Nathaniel, a young magician's apprentice, he expects to have nothing to do more taxing than a few simple illusions. But Nathaniel is a precocious talent and has something rather more dangerous in mind. Revenge! <laughs> uh, apparently, I think you said it has lots of footnotes, mm -hmm. which, yep, yeah, I, I love a footnote. Your man loves a footnote. I love writing footnotes, but I love he, reading footnotes. He only puts more footnotes in the further he gets along. Yeah. And I really enjoy them, so. 
So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It looks, I mean, it's, I presume it's, it's a kid's book, right? Or yeah. would you say YA? I think it's like a young adult novel. Yeah, I mean, the text is big enough that it could be, it looks like sort of like Harry Potter age. Yeah, age. I read them when I was, I think, an early teenager. Mm. But yeah, I really enjoyed them. Looking forward? And I like that the amulet is shiny on the cover. It is, I, I noticed that as well. <coughs> you probably won't be able to pick it up in the video. If it, shiny, shiny. Do a different angle, see if it shows up. Mm. But yeah, that is cool. Cool. Um, height. Uh, Next, I have oh, The Magic Cottage by James Herbert. We are thinking about doing a market stall where we sell horror books. And as part of that, we've been thinking about how would one get stock for such a market stall. And in looking at horror book bundles and things, I've seen this a lot. Mm. Um, May I see? Okay. I just like the look of it. So, we thought we'd found our haven, a cottage deep in the heart of the forest. Quaint, charming, maybe a little run down, but so peaceful. The woodland animals and birds couldn't have been more neighbourly. That was the first part of magic. Midge's painting and my music soared to new heights of creativity. That was another part of the magic. Our sensing, our feelings, our love for each other, well, that became the supreme magic. But the cottage had an alternative side. Oh, dang. The bad magic. The bad magic. You don't want the bad magic. So I'm looking forward to finding out what the bad magic Ooh. entails. That was £2.50. Nice. Yeah. Hoip. And the other <coughs> And this one, James Herbert, the survivor. There was another copy of this book that was ripped and written on and more expensive, um, which I thought long and hard about getting, ultimately decided not to. And then when I was digging around in the back of the shelves, I found this, which was slightly cheaper than the other one and in better nick. Yeah, the other one, Four pounds. The other one had um, like writing on the front. Yeah. Which to me, like, if you've got like, and it was in pen, it was in like Sharpie. If there's yeah. Sharpie on the front of your book, 90% discount. <laughs> Give it to me free. Give me five pounds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. This, this describes itself as a tale of death and of an evil which transcends death. Oh, that's not good. When it was initially sold, it was 75 pence. 75 pence? What, so what, you, yeah? Yes. Oh, uh, uh I'm going to guess, let's go, I'm going to say early, I'm going to say 81. Nope. What was it? 1977. Oh, that's way off. Mm. Four years off. This book is sold subject to the condition that it shall not, by way of trade or otherwise, be lent, resold, hired out, or otherwise circulated. Sue me, bitch. Oops. Okay. Right. Uh, so my one uh, next one is uh, when they had a um, selection of like uh, point horror, creeper, goosebumps books, but I went for the one that was in the best condition, and it was Caroline B. Cooney's *The Vampire's Promise*. How shiny it is! Yeah, uh, they had a, a decent selection of these books, but sometimes the cover would be a bit tatty or couple of pages like you know you get that kind of like not mold but kind of like water damagey sort of stuff that speckly situation yeah. and they were priced appropriately because of said damage but for me it's just like uh, i'd rather pay a few quid more and have a decent book so this one uh very reasonable two pound fifty um lacy and her friends are looking for excitement a night to end all nights so they break into the mall house the mysterious dark house with the circular tower the vampire's tower <laughs> They wake the vampire from his... Why would you wake a vampire from his slumber? Was it on purpose? That's, uh, I don't know. I mean, they've broken into a house, so... Mm, maybe. I don't think they've gone in there. Oh, I don't know. They wake the vampire from his slumbers and he comes to them, holding them prisoner in the crumbling ruin. And the vampire promises them one thing, that he will let them go, except for the one who will satisfy his hunger. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Speaking of something that needs satisfying hunger, is that Toast the Cat? This is here. Toasty. Toasty. Hi, baby. No, he's camera shy. No, you're shy. All right. Imagine if there wasn't a, a cat there. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in their mind. The folly I do. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, read a few point horrors recently, getting a bit nostalgic for that sort of era. Um, I mean, the quality is hit and miss, but they're certainly readable. Yeah. And for £2.50, I'm sure this will be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, I'll hope to. Next. <coughs> Three. This is an horror novel. It's not a horror novel. I like to have a But the dangers of alcoholism can be very <laughs> horrific indeed. I like to have a hard copy of reference information. I make a lot of cider. It was reasonably priced, mm. so I have that. Cool. Um, and I have this one, which is Lord Loss by Darren Shan. Big fan of the warning at the back. 
What's there? Your thumbs on it. Warning. Seriously scary. <laughs> Lovely. Book one, The Demonata. The door feels red hot, as though a fire burning behind it. I press an ear to the wood, but there's no crackle, no smoke. Just deep, heavy breathing and a curious dripping sound. My hand's on the doorknob. Inside the room, somebody giggles, low, throaty, sadistic. I'm going to take that cardboard away from you. <laughs> Enter toast. Good boy toast. Yeah. There's a ripping sound followed by snaps and crunches. My hand turns, the door opens, hell is revealed. I have bought this basically because I think the fourth book in the series is called Beck. Okay. Which so, is my name. Again, this looks kind of YA-ish. Yeah, it came from the YA section. And the the uh, bookseller seemed to know the name. I, 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 I vaguely recognise the name, but it's not, I haven't read any of his stuff, but she seemed excited that you were buying it. There was, there was a whole shelf of Darren Chan stuff, but I'm only in it hoping to get to the one that has my name on it. Mm. But I wasn't willing to buy them all in bulk in case I didn't like them. Oh, yeah. So how much did this take back? So this was two pounds. Two pounds. I mean, even if it's shite, it's two pounds. Yeah. And it like it smells nice and toast. Please, please don't touch the, the tripod. <laughs> Do you want a book? <laughs> Here you go. All right. <clears throat> so my next two buys, they're not horror, uh, they're sci-fi. And I will admit, I bought them purely for the cover. Oh, no. Uh, you, you have the way slightly. Nope. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, the first one we've got is The Star Droppers by John Brunner. When the stars are calling, answer at your own peril. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So I did get it mostly because it's like uh, like an old-fashioned businessman. Seems to be falling off the precipice into a, a void. There's a mm -hmm. star exploding behind him. He's dropped his umbrella. It all seems very... It's all going on. Very tense. Uh, John Brunner, Hugo award winning author. A star dropper got its name from the belief that the user was eavesdropping on the stars. But that was only a guess. Nobody really knew what the instrument did. The instrument itself made no sense scientifically. A conventional earpiece, an amplifier, a power source, all attached to a small vacuum box, an Al Alnico magnet, and a calibrated tuner. What you got from all this was some very extraordinary noises and the conviction that you were listening to beings from space and could almost understand what you were hearing. Hmm. Ooh. I mean, it's not my usual type of read, but again, uh, how could I not buy it? I think it was two... Look at that no, guy! It was four pounds. Yeah, I noticed that after. I, I would have definitely... Look at that guy! Yeah. I, I don't know if that's one of the titular star droppers, but I've noticed that after I bought it as well. I would have bought that anyway. It, that is part of the book, isn't it? That's not some, something that guy's drawn. Yeah, that's been printed. Okay, that's good. But yeah, it, it seems... I'm sure it's fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's a very oh. slim novel. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is quite... The oh text is quite small. Oh, my God. How yeah. small that is. I mean, you're looking Put your at, magnifying glass out. Yeah. Look at about just under 150 pages. But, um, yeah, I'm looking for something new. I, I wanted, <clears throat> one of my aims uh, at the Old Curiosity was to buy mostly just a lot of pulpy paperbacks. And I think that, that really fits the brief. Yeah. So I'm pretty sad about that. Nice. And four. Next. I have Kensuke's Kingdom by Michael Morberger. I love that cover. That's a cool cover. This is a book that I read when I was a child and I want a copy um, to reread. It's about a, like a deserted island that someone washes up on and then finds that someone else is also there, Kensuke. If I recall correctly, there's an orangutan in it. Other than that, memories are murky, but I remember enjoying it a lot. Then this I found just... Uh, it's spooking around in the horror section. So, The House in the Woods by Yvette Fielding. Is that, is, is Yvette Field, is that the most haunted lady? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> that would be good. I would enjoy that very sure, much. That name sounds familiar. Yeah. When Clovis, not a name, Eve and Tom <laughs> decide to play... <laughs> Clovis with is a name. It's not a name. There is, there's a, I'm sure there's a, there's a director called Michael Clovis, I think. No. I'm sure there is. It's not a name. It's probably not, a, it's, it's an unusual <laughs> Christian name. <laughs> Clovis, Eve and Tom decide to play with a Ouija board in an old abandoned house on Halloween. That's your, that, that, your first that's, mistake. That's a stupid idea. Error. Especially on All Hallows' Eve. That's the one night you don't want to do it. None of them foresees the horrors they're about to unleash. Definitely not Clovis. 
Doesn't know what he's doing. What starts out as a bit of fun soon transcends into something far more terrifying when a distressed and determined spirit follows them home. Before long, the friends are caught up in a series of events beyond their <coughs> wildest imaginings, and their journey to becoming ghost hunters begins. It's got a little shiny snake on the back. Snakey snake. So if it is the most haunted lady, it makes sense, because they're, they're becoming ghost hunters themselves. Mm -hmm. so, that's kind of cool. I've never heard of... And that was a pound. One pound. One pound. Oh, the uh, dedication is for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Why do I have to pay for it then? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, it is the most wanted lady. Nice. Nice. Cool. I, did, I, had, I had no idea she was doing that. All right, so my final book, um, again, not something I would usually uh, read, but uh, the cover was just like very pulpy. Uh, it's Mick Farron's, I presume that's how you pronounce it, Fade the Gambler. So it's got kind of like a Star Wars vibe uh, going on here with the little droid and the Han yeah. Solo type guy. We'll put a bigger version There's on There's a floating car. Yeah, just, it seems it's like a spaceport, like, like a mass size -y sort of situation going on. Um, when tomorrow's Earth is divided into savage belts of extreme cold and unbearable heat, when the human race mutates into three distinct and often dangerous life forms, when reactionary androids dream of playing the exhilarating but forbidden life game, when telepathic cats and dogs watch your every move, then it is time to play against the odds and gamble with your life in tomorrow's deadliest game of survival. I mean, I, I, I did mostly buy it for the art. I'd give it's it really two cool. stars just for the narrative voice yeah. it makes you do. Oh, it's got a hole in the front. It does have, there's been a hole punch. There was two books like this uh, that also, I don't know what this what does that is. What mean? A, I don't know. I'm not sure. And it kind of annoyed me because it's, 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 it's pristine. Mm. Otherwise. Um, like, oh, look at the size of that text. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long read, I think. But uh, no, it's, it's cool. It's, um, it seems very like, Action-y, space opera-y. I'm really looking forward to this. This text is so small. It's like belongs on a microfiche. <laughs> Good luck. I've always wanted to use microfiche. Oh, I've always wanted to solve a mystery using microfiche. It would feel very atmospheric, yeah. wouldn't it? To be like, what is it, a little dial you've got? Shh. Yeah. It's true. It's cool because you leave it's poisoned us. Yeah, That's I think so. Yeah. So, the old Curiosity Bookshop in Loughborough, if you're nearby, go and have a look. If you're not nearby, have a drive. Um, lady was there, made us a, a nice coffee, made you a nice tea. Yeah. Can't promise she'll make you a nice coffee or a nice tea, but she was very kind to yeah. us and made us one. Um, also, they have a cat whose name I believe is Kitty. Did not see Kitty today, so Kitty. could be fake news. I don't know, but I saw cat food in a bowl. They, but that's just that that's just to Ooh. make you think the cat's there. There's a craft room there. There is a craft room there. They, they sell fabric and buttons, and some of the buttons are skulls. Yep, that's true. Yeah. And, little, and they I think they did. I saw some handmade mugs or hand thrown mugs. I don't know what it means. Yeah. Got myself a crochet hook, one pound. Yeah, so definitely check it out. Uh, I think they had like 50,000 books uh, rotating stock. As we were leaving, someone was just bringing in like a 100 new books or something. So yeah, definitely check out. Really cool shop. Thanks for having us. So yeah, um, hope you guys had a very nice bank holiday and some spooky reads. And we will see you very soon. Yeah, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.